Hello, everyone, and welcome to Episode 9 of Jedi Fallen Order. As you may recall, we left things on a fairly dark note with Cal having successfully crushed his lightsaber in his bare hands. I didn't realize they were made out of talc that way. Whoops, sorry. Hold on just one second again. There we go. All right, and let's go find out what's on the other side of this door. Nothing. No, that's not the answer that I want. Well, okay. That's not a door. I guess. All right. Uh, we'll head out the other way. Sans lightsaber. It's like broken. What? A crystal shattered. Useless. I guess he broke the crystals on both ends. He really is... Okay. Plan. The cut's head didn't warn you. Leave me alone. Leave you alone, lost and defenseless in this dangerous place. Never. Okay, enough of this. Who are you really? Aaron Malakos. Former Jedi. Like yourself. Have much in common. I doubt that. Oh? We both survived the purge. My troops betrayed me. I was forced to strike them down, and I escaped to this <laughs> desolate place. To the darkness here. It almost took me. But I conquered it. You're the one the Knight Brothers follow. <laughs> yes. Well, these savages only respect strength. And as we both know, the Force is a most powerful ally. Oh, no, you use the Force to seize power. That's. That's everything the Jedi stood against. These are dark times. They will consume us if we do not stand with each other. I don't need your help. That broken lightsaber tells a different tale. You saw something in there, didn't you? Something terrible. There are many such places here in Dathomir. Join my family. And I can teach you how to control its power. Join my family. And I will teach you to control the power. Familiar words, Malikos. Sister Merin, you overstep your bounds. For years. You said the Jedi orchestrated the massacre that killed my sisters. Yet here one stands, and you seek only to bring him into your family. You were told to deal with it. Clearly you lack the power, little witch! Power? You are mad, Marikos. Dothamir has unmade you, and my misplaced loyalty has allowed you to lead the Knight Brothers astray. Unlike the Jedi, the Night Sisters of Dothamir do not turn on their kind. Our bond is eternal. Your sisters are dead! Yes. Their graves are all around you. Time to go. Foolish girl! This power is beyond your control! You both shall learn. When you face one night sister of Dothamir, 
wanted to be able to shout. Yo, I'm not with him. Uh, um... Okay. Okay, so this is... There's gotta be some way out of this room. Surely they won't hear me smashing their pots. So I can't pull that down. Um... Okay, there must be a different path. Yes, <laughs> the moment, it is very much all I have. Okay, well, well, no, this doesn't really look like it's leading back to where I want to be. There was a yellow thing down there. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna take me any place good. Oh, yep, I can get up there. Okay. I wonder, I mean, I don't imagine I could jump down to that lower level. I mean, that looks like it's really far away, but anything is possible. I'm not sure that I want to go visit that yellow area, though. Without a lightsaber, it seems I'm just, like, gonna get into myself into a lot of trouble. Oh, hey, Bron Bron. Bron Bron's asking if I knew that you could technically live off of dirt or at least keep from starving to death. That... I would need more information about that, because I'm not sure that the human digestive system can absorb enough nutrients out of actual dirt to... remain alive. But... Outsider! How can you do this? There's a lot of stuff I don't know, so... Seer! Seer! Tell Grace to get the Mantis running! What's happening? A night sister! She raised the dead! They're after me! Whoa, whoa, whoa! And you're leading them here? Captain, prepare for takeoff! It's kind of like how cows can draw enough nutrients from grass, but... That's only because they've got four stomachs that are sort of de specifically designed to break it down into what they need. Get us out of here! What'd you do, kid? I got dead witches crawling all over my ship! Just go! Did you find the tomb? Your master's lightsaber. I saw him. Master T'Pol, I, I saw the day he died. I saw what I did. Cal. Now it's destroyed. I couldn't save him. Cal, you were only a child. No. 
No, I know I could have helped him if I'd been stronger and braver if I would have listened to him. I could have helped him. I know it. Cal, it's time I told you everything that happened to me when I escaped the Empire. They brought Trilla in the room. And when I saw her eyes, they showed me what I had caused. She was an inquisitor. And something in me gave. And I lost all control. And I tapped into the dark side. And I killed them all. Every last one of them. Except for her. And for years, I couldn't forgive myself. I was a wreck because I had all this rage and I tried pushing it down, but there was no hiding from myself and all I wanted to do was die. But then I learned about the Holocron, a spark of hope that there could be a future, that we could move on. Get up. I can't change what I did no more than you can change what happened to your master. It's in the past, but Cal, you have to make a choice to move on. How? You're gonna start with this. to build a new one. Sorry, I do want to read this. Uh, and also, uh, Bron Bron, although I do have um, Discord, it's not logged in right at the moment, so I wouldn't be able to see the screenshot until later on. Uh, Cal and BD found their way to the ruins where Cal faced a dark version of Jaro Tapal. This phantom shattered Cal's light- I kind of feel like Cal shattered his lightsaber, leaving him defenseless. Cal and BD fled the ruin. Running into the Wanderer, he revealed himself as Taran Malakos, a former Jedi now studying the dark side. Malakos asked Cal to join his quest for power, but was cut off by Marin. She raised a horde of undead to destroy him and Cal. Cal and BD rushed back to the Mantis after Cal's confession about Order 66. It's a weird confession. Um, Seer says it's time for him to build his own lightsaber. You will be tested. Yeah. But I'm ready. I don't mean just here. Every Jedi faces the dark side. And it's very easy to fail. You're still struggling with the dark side. Even after cutting yourself off from the Force. We will always struggle. But that is the test. It's the choice to keep fighting that makes us who we are. I guess it's about time I find out who I am. All right, new planet, which is fun. I had sort of suspected that where there would be additional worlds to visit based on the fact that the hollow table was clearly outlined, like, like clearly had additional space.
but I wasn't sure. I wasn't 100% sure, so I'm glad that there are. Why does it look like there's two entrances here? Ah, because there's two entrances here. Uh, so, Bron Bron is saying that one thing he doesn't understand about Star Wars is that the light and the dark side of the Force seem to be in constant battle to destroy the other. Uh, I think what's happening there is that it's that the people who exercise these different versions of these different aspects of the Force, the people are trying to um, be at war with one another. I'm not sure that the Force itself is quite as binary as the people make it out to be. And in fact, I think that the most interesting Star Wars stories embrace that. Young Lindsay, the time of the gathering is upon us. Use your skills wisely. Hold on, I want to see this. Younglings came here for the sacred rite of the gathering. A test all Jedi must pass to build their lightsaber. Okay. That was a mistake! Okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, I would submit that one of the things that was really interesting about The Last Jedi was it sort of introduced into the mainstream movies the idea that it's not a binary choice between light side and dark side. This is also something that Karen Travis had touched on in the books that I mentioned in an it's earlier episode. Temple. It's been a while. But... Yeah. I remember every Jedi comes here as a kid. Or they did when there were Jedi. Oh, and Brun Brun's asking if I remember to check out the lightsaber suit. Um, unfortunately, work has been ridiculously busy. For example, we wanted to stream yesterday and did not have an opportunity to do so, so I haven't had a chance to do that. And there was one other thing that I wanted to look up as well. Boy, I am blanking on it. Do you remember what it was? It was... Oh, that's right. It was the Assassin's Creed video. Yeah. We, we need to put that in. So, uh, I haven't forgotten. I was actually thinking about it the other day, but I haven't had a chance to Google search it and see, uh, see an image of my own. So far, I'm getting the sense that there's not a lot off this beaten path, at least not while the wind is blowing in the way that it is. Looks but like a way through over there. I'll be careful with the ice. I'll probably want to examine this area even more closely a little bit later. So we can see areas up there that look like they would be climbable. The trouble is... Okay. I was about to say I'm not sure how to get up there, but this seems like something. Okay, so Bron Bron's going to be out for a bit while his phone loads a security update. No worries. Thank you very much for stopping by. Also, examine. Wait, what was examine? This is the worst blizzard I've ever seen. The storm, the temple, it all feels connected somehow. Climbing claws remind me of an upgrade that you could find in, and this is not a spoiler. Um, when I was playing Twilight Princess, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, um, my one sort of complaint about it in a game that I was otherwise really enjoying was that the climbing speed was so slow. And then after a certain point, as with most things in that game, uh, in that whole series, in fact, you get an upgrade that makes the climbing like almost incidental. And that's what the climbing claws are reminding me of. The gathering room lies at the entrance to the Crystal Caves, used primarily as a meeting area. Jedi Masters brought younglings here for instruction and meditation before they began their sacred search for kyber crystals. Oh, I don't know what that is, but I want it. Oh, it's something I can pull. Hmm. Oh. You 
used to be beautiful. The warmth is nice. Built by the Jedi Masters who constructed the temple on Elam a thousand years ago, this window magnified natural outside light for heat. A beam of intense light generated through the large glass portal was then directed to specific areas of ice that melted under the heat. Okay, so we are being introduced to a puzzle element here. There is no question in my mind that we are going to see additional beams of heat that we need to use to warm the area in front of us and get ahead. Remember this room. Master Yoda melted that door to let us into the caves. Not with the force, with that crystal. The light passed through it and carried its warmth. I bet we can do it too. Yeah, I bet we can do it as well. It's just, uh, we need some place to plug this in because as soon as I let go of it, well, apparently we can't do this just yet. So let's examine what else we can see in the room. This looks like exactly one of those crystals. Crystals arranged within the temple enhance the light to focus heat on specific areas. As the light beam melts the ice, it opens hidden passageways known only to the Jedi. Like that. No, no, I'm cool, BD-1. I'm just looking. Okay, yep, so we've got some other areas here to explore. Hmm. Well, I could probably swing on this, except I'm not sure where I would swing to. Nope. Okay. Got it. Okay. So now that that is presumably pulled over a little bit, if I open that up... Not that, but the other one. If we open up the door up top, the light may hit the crystal. The only question is, how do I get back up there from here? I can jump down, and presumably there would be a way back up. That... That's video game logic there. In the real world, you would never just jump into a pit and vaguely assume there would be some other path out. But here, it seems like the only path forward. I hear you, BD. Let me see. A statue of a venerable Jedi Master adorns the central chamber leading to the Crystal Cave. Carved hundreds of years ago, it serves as a symbol to the sacred wisdom, enlightenment, and perseverance of the once great Jedi Order. Alright, climbable wall. Looks promising. Yeah, sure. Interesting to me that the Jedi... You know, fabled Jedi statues that we can see have no faces or even bodies inside those hoods. They're just literally empty cloaks. So that got me nothing going down there, by the way. Right, let me try opening this up. So if I rotate that around, yeah, it actually might hit that crystal. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Okay, let me pull this over. Let me let this go. 
Maybe I need to tug it with my own hands. Yeah, we'll plug this in. Like that. Now, if I shove that over there, is that going to sever the cable, do you think? It does. Okay. Just figuring out the rules. Okay, so let me just tug this over. Whoops. Yep, with my hand. Wait. Boy, rarely have I so badly wanted the Zelda do 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 do. <laughs> also, we can we go through here? Like it's just a light crystal, right? Yeah. All right, not an actual passageway, but now we have an actual passageway, and that's just going down there. Yes. Okay, new area. Crystal. Wait, this is not a new area. Oh, no. Huh. Well, hold on. Glad I fell down here, apparently. Thanks, BD. Jedi devices were constructed within the ancient temple to control certain conditions or activate protected passages. Many such tools exist using basic levers, swivel arms, and rudimentary objects that, when positioned properly, will achieve a specific purpose. So basically, they are Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's what we're learning about Jedi training techniques. Okay, so I can close this door. Doesn't really help me to do so that I can think of. Just reach out with your hands. Just get the thing. Yes, okay. I can sort of tug this over a little bit. No, no, I can't. Hmm. So that beam just goes there and there's no way to secure it in place and then reflect it off the crystal that's in there. Not that I can see. Wait, does this actually fork the crystal, or no? It just aims it in a new direction. Hmm. And one of the reasons I want to get back up there... Oh, wait, maybe I can swing up there. Maybe I'm being extremely basic in my swinging ideas. And one more. Nope, no, that's not even close. Okay, let me go through the passageway that we unlocked. It... Oh, I'm so sorry. You know what it just occurred to me? The other end of that passageway goes upstairs. I, I, I was like, oh, I've already been here, but it didn't occur to me that, like, yes, I have already been there. And how did I get down there? I walked from the upper level. That is a classic example of not bothering to look at the thing that the game just opened up. Okay, so now I can open this up. Now the trouble is I need to secure this door open or, or I need to secure the crystal over slightly, which it now occurs to me that I can do if I tie it off down here. Let me just grab that. I'm gonna release it. Grab the rope. Hug this over here. Wait, but there's a problem. Now I can't get up there to open the door. Because I can't swing over there from here. Huh. Oh, wait, 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 I'm pushing it. 
Sorry, hold on. So this is what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to freeze it and then push it and then jump on so I can ride it over. Freeze, push. Okay, that didn't quite work the way that I wanted. Okay, let's try it the other way. Wait, I just thought of it. Okay, I got it. Here's what we do. Grab this. Swing over here. Pull this over. Pull this over. Plug this in here. And now shove it over there. Okay. And now I just have to climb over here. Got it. All the pieces make sense. This came up in Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well. I really like light puzzles. Reflecting beams of light or directing waves of sound, stuff like that. I always have fun with that. Okay. Onward and inward. Fair warning, this may be one of the shorter episodes only because we're starting it off a little bit later. On the plus side, uh, this is good news, but mostly just for us. I uh, managed to fix a, a, an odd technical problem that had really been frustrating for the last several days. Ooh, thermal vents. I probably don't want to stick my face in there. It's literally boiling hot. But I wouldn't mind looking yeah. around a bit. Volcanic activity on Elam forms hydrogeological vents of hot water ejected turbulently, often accompanied by steam. These geysers may change in size or duration based on heavy volcanic episodes and ongoing mineral depositions. Deposits? I thought I saw the word depositions in there. Not quite. Oh, see? Secret chest. Yes, Ivana. Okay, also, I can't check BD1's map in here. This feels like a new area. Also, you know, I know this was a topic of conversation in an earlier episode. The swimming controls actually feel just fine. Uh, it also helps that they're not throwing any... combat or like timed you gotta make it through this weird maze before you suffocate like it's just exploration and that is making me uh, pretty okay with it so I by the way totally lost track of where we came in versus not so let's just pick a direction okay and this is of all things, the one direction that I've already been. Yeah, it looks like we want to go straight across from where I am. There's heat coming from those cracks underwater, but it's freezing up here. I can feel it. It's calling to me. We must be close. Shit, I can't pick any Kuiper crystal. It chooses you. Yeah, kind of like you. Honest to God, for a second, I thought he was going to say kind of like Harry Potter. <laughs> 
I'm very glad that he didn't say that, but that was what was on my mind. You don't choose your wand, your wand chooses you. Elam is naturally abundant in geological formations found within mineral-rich underground rocks. Billions of years of accumulated mineral matter deposited from hydrothermal fluids have infused the rock walls with, in, with valuable uh, constituents, including rare crystals. Just a little shake. It'll be okay. Hope it holds. Hey, BD. I can't help but feel like there are things that I am missing. I feel like I'm hurrying more than exploring. Got something? Okay. I feel like I've learned all I need to about the geology of Elam. And that looks like a very slippery thing that I'm going to have to go this way on. No! No! Really should have done the double jump there. Thought I was far enough in. One. Call's getting stronger. Let's hurry. Wait. Right stick to examine. I feel like I'm surrounded by ghosts. No, I'm not all right. It's hard to be here. Thanks, buddy. Speaking of, like, the fact that Cal and BD are friends, after the recent episode where we were talking about, like, clones and droids and basically slave armies... Did they even jump down there? Doesn't super look like it. Anyway. Uh, I was talking with my producer and, you know, saying, hey, I got to get off this topic because I don't have anything new to say beyond what I've said. But the game keeps like shoving it in my face. And I like like it's super weird to me that Order 66 is uh, consistently Damn. played as the Jedi here? getting played or betrayed. Um, so something really weird is happening. You may notice that my lightsaber is ignited and not in my hand. Oh, there we go. Wait. Okay. Um. Huh. I guess it's still broken. I thought Seer gave me her lightsaber. Ow. Yeah, perhaps I badly misunderstood that interaction between the two of them. Oh, I'm not sure I want to go this way. Oh, he won't open that as long as they're shooting. Come on, BD-1, can't you do some high-pressure hacking with a couple interrogation droids? That seems like that's probably good. Yeah, anyway, the topic was, hey, I gotta, you know, back off that. And my producer goes, and this is... <laughs> 
I will not be able to do this the justice that it deserves. She goes to me, um, so if BD1 requests his independence right ahead of the final boss fight because it wants to go be a medical droid, you're going to be okay with just letting him leave, right? <laughs> And then the part that, like, I can't communicate accurately is, like, when she said that, she just, like, took a big bite of cereal. <laughs> and was just munching and crunching. I can see it's shiny. Just enjoying my, like, um, uh, oh, boy, it really wants me to go that way. That was it turning the camera on me. Okay. Try to go this way. And like, I mean, by the way, can you imagine if that was the... Huh, okay. This is a... This wall looks very lightsaber vulnerable, but I don't have one of those right now. But it was, it was a fascinating question, because that's the thing, right? The culture in Jedi is, is, is... Sorry, sorry. The culture in Star Wars is so dependent on droids to do so much of their menial labor, from, you know, pushing stuff around to torturing people. Like, they've got droids to do basically everything. And you do get the sense that their society would have to be vastly restructured if they decided to start treating droids as the sapient, intelligent, emotional entities that they are. And here I am in a very similar situation. Through there. I can feel it. We're almost out of here. I promise. Cal is heavily dependent on his relationship with BD-1. And if the game said... All right, tough guy. You want to do this fight without, you know, any sort of droid servitude? Here's your chance. Hold on. BD, don't come any closer. BD! Oh, I think I might be freezing to death. Failure is not the end, my friend.
Time's come. This may be the last you see of me. I can sense the doom of the Jedi Order is upon us. <laughs> no! Failure is not the end. It is a necessary part of the path. Hope will always survive in those who continue to fight. Like you, BD-1. I believe you will find someone just as brave and persistent as you have been. And you will help them as you have helped me. But your memory will be completely lost. Are you sure you want to do this? Beginning total memory encryption. <laughs> Only with a trusted connection will your memories be restored. I believe in you, as I always have. And I believe in whom you choose to replace me. In his final message, Master Cordova revealed a close connection to BD-1, his faithful companion droid. On their many adventures, they shared close trust as BD-1 recorded Cordova's journey and vital knowledge. When they parted ways, BD-1 agreed to have his memory banks encrypted with this information, beginning his important mission and saying goodbye to one another. Okay. The, the fact that he's not on my shoulder makes me a little bit concerned. Ooh. Hold on. Be wary, Padawan. You do not choose your crystal. It chooses you. But what, wait, but so there's a crystal there, but I guess it didn't choose me, so I have to leave it there. In memory of the Padawan that left it mysteriously behind. I'm sorry, I am disproportionately excited about this. Oh! <laughs> Is this permanent? Or can you change it at any time? Oh, that's so awesome! So many colors! I'm sorry, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh, God, there's like three that I want. But none more than this.
Oh my god! Mm, I'm so happy! Sorry, sorry, there's so much happening, and I'm so happy for it. Um, Seer gifted Cal her lightsaber hilt, though her kyber crystal had been sold long ago to pay for Grease's debts. Inside the caves, Cal followed the call of his crystal through a crack in an ice wall. The ice beneath Cal and BD shattered, sending Cal plummeting into icy water. BD saved Cal just in time, but the crystal split in two. That triggered a log from Cordova, revealing BD won... BD sacrifice his memories to store logs vital to Cal's quest. Cal combined Seer and Gerald's hilt, creating a lightsaber with a single, double, and dual wield capabilities. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. And I'm sorry, I just need to see, can you change the color? Because I chose the one that I wanted most in that moment. Oh, so many colors! I'm so happy. Thank you, game designers. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, no, we're gonna rock it with purple for a while. Oh, okay, it's a, sp it's a special attack, but nonetheless. Nonetheless. I go though let me just take a quick look around here that does not appear to be a working door uh hey he who dies i hope you're doing well identify yourself Critically 
injured. I need a stim, BD. Son of Never was good at these droids. Dying here, buddy. A little help, bud. the dual lightsaber attack is that it it's long and appears to be uninterruptible by me the enemy has no trouble interrupting it over here bd interesting uh decision for them to say okay we had the player go without a lightsaber for 15 BD. minutes or so Door. Uh, now it's all gonna be lightsaber combat for a while. Seer, we need to get out of here. They've taken uh, over Ilum. Oh, God. Are you all right? No, they spotted me. And that's not all. They're mining kyber crystals. Captain, prepare for takeoff. Okay, so timeout, because a couple questions came in, and I apologize if I did not see them in time. There was a lot of uh, droid bashing happening there. So, first of all, Last Facts is asking if the game is good if you're a Star Wars fan. Well, I'm a Star Wars fan, and I think it's very good, so I'm going to go with yes on that. And then, like, Night and Day is asking, we destroy an army of droids out here with varying degrees of success. Uh, it never, ever feels proud to... What is he... Ah. Let's look. Uh, just get Haymaker punched by one of those big, lanky droids. Imperial mining operations scour sites once considered sacred by the Jedi, devouring the planet's resources for their own corrupt secret agenda. It's hard to look at these crystals after everything we went through. Yeah, by this point in the game, I really feel like I should be a lot better at fighting those things, but man, they just haul off and punch me square in the throat every once in a while. Okay, no skill points, but I'm going to rest because I had to use a few stim packs to make it through all those scout troopers. Enemy closing in! Yeah, okay. Fire on the enemy. He's moving. You, in him! Boy, I can't. can't be that quick. Focus your fire. You won't kill me. Yeah, uh, security droids are like heavyweight boxers. If heavyweight boxers were about as slow as a sloth, like the windup they have on there, like I feel so dumb every time I get Check punched. It, it is so embarrassing. They're fun to fight, uh, for real. 
Uh, powerful kyber crystals grow naturally on Elam, one of the rare planets in the galaxy where they may be found. Such crystals resonate with concentrated energy in a unique manner through the Force, exhibiting a collective consciousness that allows them to communicate with one another and living beings. As part of Jedi training, younglings were sent to the crystal caves of Elam to mine these crystals in order to construct their own lightsabers. So... Oh wait, this is the way back out, isn't it? I think it is. Let me just look down here. There was a lot of frantic running earlier, and I'd like to make sure that I haven't left any chests on the... Yep, like this. Yeah, you guys have joined just as I unlocked the new colors of lightsaber. For a very long time, it was blue and green, and I actually thought it was something of a mystery why... No, uh, that's not going to be good. I damaged them. I just can't hit him. Yep, I got a problem here. Get up here. Fortunately, they have the same problem in that rocket trooper is not too concerned about who he hits with his rockets. I can't reflect his rockets from all the way over here. I can shove them away. Okay, and that just goes back downstairs, so I don't want that. by the way. You're lighting up Imperial Channel. They're sending everything they've got at you. Are you in green state? We're laying low, but the storm is here. What about disguising the Mantis' signal? That trick only works if you're not. I have another idea. You can't stop us all. Oh, God, Jedi? I hit the droids. Watch this, mm. Jedi. Bleed. Fuck this. <laughs> Your mind to kill, Jedi. Okay, I'm sorry, sir. You were in the middle of saying something. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I 
Whoops. So what, what's happening there is that because you press X to dive, I keep trying to do like a, a proper dive into the water and Cal is just disinterested. He jumps in feet first and then you have to hold X to get underwater. When we get up, I'm going to look at them. Through their encryption. I'm scrambling transmissions, but it won't be long before they're restored. Hopefully it'll buy us some time. Thank you. There's stormtroopers everywhere. Ilum was our planet, Cal. Don't let them forget that. Okay, so there's a bit of a problem in that there's a couple places to go that we can go, and I want to make sure that I get all the lightsaber parts and so forth. Uh, this looks, uh, as always, very far away in the map, but it actually isn't. It's going to be right over here. Oh, thank you very much for the follow, like night and day. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a long trip at all because... Yeah, yeah, we're already two-thirds of the way back. Yeah, what was it? The guy with the electro staff there just, like, pummeled me in the face. And I was holding block, too. I just was got completely animation locked. Okay, so, yep, if we follow this ice slide down, we've got a way there, and also a way here, which is interesting. It looks like there's a save point just behind that, and we can't get up to it from here, so... Slide it is. Out. Okay, and our green door is right over there. So, for example, somebody was just asking, um, hey, is the game fun if you are a Star Wars fan? So, okay, so so here's an example for uh, Flask Facts, if he's still here. If I rest, I get all my sim packs back, but all the enemies respawn as well. Actually, you know what? That's fine with me, because I could use the experience points, and frankly, the experience of fighting them, because I'm still, as you can see, not especially proficient with the combat. Yes. See her. I remember the wonder of these caves. How I couldn't wait to complete my training and become a Jedi Knight. Ow. If you say so, am I even close to hitting it? No, oh, I really should have locked on to him for that. So, it was implied in one of the codex entries that the security droids here were... Hey, no, that's... I really thought this person was dead. It was implied that you could hack them with BD-1, and I have that upgrade, and yet I'm not sure when I would ever have an opportunity to hack. They are punchy right up until the moment of their destruction. All right. Yeah, so uh, Flashbacks is here. Yeah, so the map is one of my favorite elements of the interface. It makes it extremely clear where you have been, where you have not been, where you can go. And also, it, it's very clear about, oh, you just can't go here right now. It'll show you, like, this area is red, which indicates to you, okay, I can come back later, but I don't have what I need right now, so I won't waste my time. Uh, hold on a second. Of your emotions, young one. 
But Master, this is easy. Oh, I don't think I heard that whole thing. Uh, this bag belonged to a Jedi Master who tried to provide their youngling with wisdom. I take it he was unique among his craft. All the other masters at the time were filling their younglings' minds with specious lies. Okay. So, we followed up on that lead and found a secret with one-third of a life upgrade. Pretty good. Now, I want to head over there. Not for any particular reason, because it looks like it's just a shortcut, but we might as well have that ready to go. Oh, by the way, this is what I was talking about. Like, see this red door right here? I can't do that yet. Uh, I know that much of it. I don't know what it is or what I need, but it's a nice little way of the game saying, hey, uh, don't stress about this. You can't do it yet. Don't waste your time on it. Oh, they're really going to be mad at me about that. I can't hit him! Seal the intruder! Get the coward! Don't regret that! Okay, and... Wait, that is... Here, yes? Turns out I have no idea where this... Okay, this appears to be on the layer above me. Okay. Okay, hey, very much thank you for uh, Gunners32 says, try getting behind the droid to, ha to hack them after you've damaged them. I will try that next time. Yeah, okay, so this looks like it might be how to get up there. Ish. Oh, well, we found a chest one way or the other. Hey, BD, what's this? Okay, BD, what is it? Oh! Hit him! Just you and me, scum. Good scan, BD. Imperial machinery. Uh, generates power and controls interior temperatures of their industrial operations by harnessing geothermal energy from the planet's core. The process results in harmful byproducts and is highly destructive to the pristine ecosystem. It really does feel like the Empire starts first with, how can we make this inefficient? Oh, hello. Just hanging out? Nope. Opposition. Systems failing. Oh, I remember this room. Okay, I think we unlocked a shortcut. I want to try the uh, the hack. Let's try to do that. Unproductive human. Mm. Ow. Smashing opponent. So. On the, what's it called? The, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh boy, hold on. I feel like there's a step I'm missing. BD, I need help. On the uh, interrogation droids, you uh, you have to use force pull to sort of immobilize them for a second, and then you can. Then you can hack them. Requesting maintenance. Enemy. Oh, that's not the guy I wanted to bring into this. So 
the trouble that I have with the droids is that when I block them, they do their unblockable attack, and I eat it every time. A little help, BD. Let me see real quick if uh, Gunners has a follow-up here. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry, there's a lot happening. Hello to more than a Mia. Uh, hello to Chivalry. And also, Gunners is saying, you uh, did you definitely get the upgrade to hack those droids from Kashyyyk? Which, maybe not. Uh, and also, it's a, it's two separate BD-1 upgrades. Okay, that makes sense. Also, me and Chivalry, check out this awesome new lightsaber. I'm so happy with it. Your odds of surviving are low. Very low. Incompetent. Trivial opposition. Ow, ow, ow. Unwise. Superior Jedi. Unproductive human. Bashing opponent. Ow. Nope, nope. Sudden movement unforeseen. <laughs> Hold on, can we just appreciate that when you kick one of these droids, it just makes the most impotent little tink? Okay, I came here for a purpose and have gotten way off that purpose. So I'm trying to get to that thicket of green lines and it looks like it's this way and then across this rope. Uh, so actually, orange is available. Orange was made available today, in fact, as part of a a free patch that unlocked all of the pre-order bonuses for everybody. By the way, apparently I'd been through there and just hadn't hacked it open quite enough. Uh, and the fact that it's like a pre-order bonus actually made me not want orange. You know, the fact that it's like a... I, I don't know. It, it just feels a little scummy. I feel like I earned purple. Orange is something they gave away. Ow. Hold on. Someone else take him. He's moving. Take him out. Get him already. He's on the run. I can get him. Confirm. Hold on. I'm not doing all the work. Oh, man. Kill you. You're not scary. Okay, now we are on our way home. So that is dot 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 this way. There. There. I got it. Oh. Oh. I get a feeling Rocket Guy isn't invited to the Imperial parties. Get on him! Fire, you coward! You can't stop at all! You can't hit him! Get 
guy, you and I are going to party someday. <laughs> no, no, wait. Too many unblockable attacks. This might actually kill me. Hold on a second. Okay, everybody time out. BD, I need help. Stim. Enemy is recovering. Too much for you. What is happening here? Ah. Uh, okay. You'll be sorry. You cannot escape. Yeah. You made a big mistake. Not moving in fight. So, we should be back to the ship in just a second. Oh my gosh. Hey, Fox Eyes. Uh, and also, hello to Danatello. Wow, hold on. Did I get raided? One, one second. Let me go back because there's a whole bunch of people. No, wow, people just checking in. Hi, Rickety Artist. Oh, hey, uh, fun announcement, because I don't think that we've had a chance to talk about it here. Rickety Artist has now made affiliate, and that means a couple things. First of all, uh, anybody who heard our announcements here and headed over, thank you very, very much. Rickety Artist is a great streamer. We enjoy his episodes quite a bit, and the only thing that he was missing for a while was just bringing enough of us together at the same time to get the viewer numbers up and reach affiliate. So that has been done. Not that that means that you shouldn't continue to watch him. Uh, he is a uh, great company and a lot of fun, so I hope that you will continue to do that. But now that he is an affiliate, that means that his founder's badges are open. So, hold on, I may not have a chance to finish that thought, depending on... Shoot him. Don't let him run! How are we supposed to hit him? Unproductive human. Yeah, no, 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 no. Snatching attacker. Get around him! He's too fast for us! Get up here! Hurry! No, 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 stay away! Oh, thank you, friendly droid. Well, I wasn't sure that hacking him had done very much, except one take one set of guns off my skull, but no, it worked out just fine. 
Let me just look in this chamber very quickly. I feel like we've done everything. Yeah, it looks like they just gave a... Look out! On it! Oh, the droid is continuing to follow, which is very helpful. I assume. I'm not sure if it They've took any shots there. Reinforcements. Every star destroyer in the sector is on their way here. Uh oh. If they get here before you do. No, we didn't come all this way to get captured. I'll be there. Yes. So He's if here. you've ever We've wanted to company. have a tell Greece to close the mantis. What? With the Empire on your tail? Are you crazy, kid? Trust me. We do. We'll close the ship. If you ever wanted to have a cool, exclusive Founders badge, you can do that right now at Rickety Artist, uh, with an underscore in there. Help me, BD. My success rate at these, taking these things one at a time was okay. The two at a time may be a little bit rough. next to that. No, no, that was... That was me attempting to reflect the bombs, no. not just shove the big robot face. This has been particularly frantic, and I'm not doing a great job of keeping up on chat, so my apologies. Hopefully, if we get a story beat here, we'll be able to escape some Star Destroyers and catch up on casual conversation. You did it. We did. I wouldn't be here without all of you. I used to sit on Braca dreaming about storming Coruscant with survivors from the jet. Also, the, storm, the Star Destroyers are on the way, so maybe we should continue this conversation in orbit. Uh, on their way out of the caves, Cal discovered a massive Imperial mining operation on Elam designed to extract the planet's kyber crystals. As Cal and BD fought their way back to the Mantis, Siri used Trilla's trick from Mictral's tomb to prevent the Empire from calling reinforcements. The Empire eventually reversed the slice, but it gave Cal and BD enough time to get back to the Mantis. Now with the lightsaber reforged, Cal must return to Dathomir and face the dark side I once again. Him. Instead, the Order's hopes rest on a gambler, a fallen Jedi, and a failed Padawan. A bunch of screw-ups. You can say that again. It is the only reliable one. He let Cordova wipe his memory so he could stay behind and guide us. But you're both willing to sacrifice everything. To keep going even when it seems impossible. Failure's a part of the journey. I get that now. Thank you. All of you. Uh, so... Uh, Chivalry was asking, is that dual-wielding lightsabers? So, uh, we do have a special attack now that causes him to split his um, hilt in two and do um, twin lightsaber attacks, which is very fun. <laughs> but it's not its not a full-on style. It is rather a special attack. Uh, I'm very, very glad for it. If you, if you watch this episode later on, you will see the moment when I discovered that that was possible. And <laughs> so happy. Yeah. 
Okay, and I believe we can also get a skill ability. I really like the idea of extending the lightsaber throw for sure. Although Howling Push is a, is a very strong option as well. Yeah, let's do Howling Push. Yeah, mostly knocking down the big guys, like the big robots. Be very helpful, I think. Oh, wow, Rickety Artist is back from his weekly D&D game. I, assuming that if, if that is Dungeons & Dragons, I would love it if you guys decided to um, stream some of those. I always have a lot of fun watching those. Okay, so we picked up so many lightsaber parts. Oh, and we got um, Sira's part as well. Yeah, you know what? We haven't seen that. Let's do that. And, yep, we got that part. And then we just get to swap out the material. Oh, we've never used this. Let's rock some uh, Neuranium. Yep, so these are all the cool colors that we've unlocked. We've got yellow, cyan, magenta, indigo. Yeah, and see here where it says premium content? I don't know. Uh, let's give it a shot, I guess. It's not as cool as if we had, like, unlocked it through a quest or something. All right, and I guess we're headed back to Dathomir. Where to next? Now, see, if you look at how this is laid out, my money is that there's at least one more planet, at least one more. And it wouldn't surprise me if there were two, actually, given how the planets are arrayed around this as a center point, but let's head back to... Yes, Dathomir. Dathomir, huh? It's time I faced him. Yes. You're ready to face your past. What about you and Trilla? Well, let me pause real quick to say hello to everybody coming in from The Real Cutie Pie. Had a chance to watch her stream a little bit earlier today, and she was doing some Monster Hunter World, which was very fun. To anybody who's joining for the first time, we're doing a full-length playthrough of Jedi Fallen Order. We are far enough in that if you were concerned about spoilers, you should be concerned about spoilers. But if you've already played it and want to come along for the adventure, uh... Stay tuned, because we're on our way back to a planet, and we're going to go see some new stuff. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. You know what you need to do to start healing, and I'm so proud of you for that. I have my own path. I'm here for you if you need me. Uh, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Minarchs. Uh, it is going very well. Thank you very much for the fun stream earlier. I got a chance to see some of your... Sit down, kid. It's time to oh, land. Hold on. Monster Hunter World stream. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were using that insect blade, which was my, my preferred weapon during the brief time that I played. Uh, and then I started trying to mix it up with the... I always say switch axe, but it's actually the charge blade. Yeah, Charge Blade is a tough weapon, at least for me. It's slow, but it hits like a like a we'll rocket fine. punch. We'll be fine. I, Any on bets on what horrible thing will happen this time? More dead things? Giant spiders? Killer plants? Hold that thought. Oh, no. There was a conversation that I walked away from. I did not mean to do that. Sorry, I just, I'm not happy with the orange blade. It just really bugs me. Uh, we're gonna switch here and go back to purple.
Yeah, I might switch out from the uh, charge blade if I return to Monster Hunter World. It's... The thing I like about the Insect Glaive is how incredibly mobile you can be with it. And once you get uh, accustomed to the sort of the aerial dancing that you can do in that, before. it's a lot That's of fun. because for a brief moment I forgot where we were. But thank you so much for reminding me, Cal. No problem. Well, how are you holding up? Being back here and all. I think I can do this. Hey, if you ask me, Cal, I know you can. Thanks, buddy. I could use some help out there if you want to join me. What? Why would I ever do that? No, 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 I'm not going out there. What do you want, Cal? <laughs> Nothing. Just kidding. Well, I'm glad my fear of a painful death by zombie witches makes you a little bit more at ease. Now hurry up and let's get out of here. All right, let's do it. New objective. Okay, so we are headed... Oh, gosh. All right, so now I've just got to figure out how to get there. <laughs> Which might take a second. Yeah, for anybody... And I, I... You know, surely everybody coming over from Cutie Pie's stream is going to be familiar with it. But if anybody else came in for some Jedi Fallen Order and isn't yet familiar with Monster Hunter World, it is difficult to overstate how different that game can feel depending on what weapon set you are. Hold on, I'm getting zombie grappled. In Monster Hunter, every weapon basically feels like you're playing a completely different game. I mean, there's a little bit of crossover between the light bow gun and the heavy bow gun, but to a large extent, it's um, the weapon set that you choose is going to greatly define how the game feels to you, and swapping out one weapon set for another is effectively like learning a brand new, what is this? Well, let's practice that for a bit. I didn't realize there was a spider party over here. And the weapon sets are so different that I've always been very, very reluctant to change out. I feel like I've spent so much time and effort learning this one that to start over would be like starting over. Okay, that was me. Overestimating, overestimating the amount of force that I had left. Yeah, so I would say uh, um, Cutie Pie was saying that this uh, game seems pretty fun. Uh, I am disappointed in my own lack of skill with it because I feel like somebody who was a little bit more adroit with the combat might make it look even better, but... Hit me! I have to say that as a sort of Souls-like game, it is the most approachable that I've tried. Not that I have tried many, but I think that it is... It's very fast. It is relatively forgiving compared to something that was actually from uh, from software. And it's Star Wars, so it tends to be a lot of fun. Uh, yes, I can climb this. Okay. Not super great at these guys, What's but that? we'll see how it goes. Going up! Okay, okay. Join in the fun! Just grace me! Here it comes! He's quick, huh? Look! After it! 
going airborne. Stim. Draw Wait, stim. I said stim and got very little Watch stim. This. Oh, he's the baby. I think his friend is dead. I think I just knocked him to a rock wall and he couldn't find his way out. Okay. <laughs> and thus ends the saga of Mad Midge. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Cutie Pie is saying, uh, played 100 hours of Insect Glaive and did one hunt with Longsword, directly gave it up. Yeah, and that ends. So other people will swear by the Longsword. Um, I feel like your experience with Monster Hunter is going to be greatly defined by your preferred weapon set and whether or not you are willing to experiment to find your preferred weapon set. I know a lot of people who basically tried the sword and shield, which is what you sort of default to, and they didn't like immediately cotton to that and were like, oh, this game isn't for me. No, that's not how the game works. Like the twin daggers are totally different from that. And the gun lance thing is even more different than that. Yeah, Monster Hunter World, it is a, an acquired taste but one worth acquiring. Master. You were wrong to return here unarmed. Not unarmed. You think that lightsaber proves you were Jedi? No. Chasing you. Memories that have haunted me since Braca. I won't run from them anymore. Then let us see what manner of death your courage brings. I taught you everything you know. A failure! I'm glad that people are so happy with Iceborne. You know, sometimes when a game is as successful as Monster Hunter World, the company isn't quite sure how to follow up with it, and their attempt to do so can be very, very disappointing. I think that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a good example of that, where the first DLC was roundly um, mocked by people. Uh, they really didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, Iceborne, on the other hand, 
people seem super happy with it, and that is good news. Sorry to hear about the performance issues. It seems to me like uh, Capcom took their time with it. I think that their goal was to avoid that. It's frustrating to hear that it's still a thing. You chose to return. Brave, but not wise. Maybe. Marin, right? I'm Cal Kestis. What you were told about the Jedi was not true. So you say, Cal. Malikos said many things too. Terra Malikos might have been part of my order, but what he is now, I... I have no idea. All I do know is having a lightsaber isn't what makes you a Jedi. Then what does? We were peacekeepers. We were betrayed by those we protected. Hunted down by the Empire, I... I might be one of the last of my kind. I was only a child when they attacked. An armored warrior brandishing this descended upon us and cut down my people, my sisters, until I was left alone with the dead. Then Malikos came and promised me revenge if I shared our secrets with him in return. I know what it's like to lose everything. And Malikos was wrong to use that against you. We don't have to be enemies. We will need this. She goes again. I'll be watching. Let's get out of here. Malikos lies ahead. You could turn back. I can't. Lives are at stake. Um, yeah, one of the things that is impressive about um, uh, Iceborne is how much content there is. I mean, people play that for dozens and dozens and dozens of hours and feel like there's still more to do. Um, so Bron Brown's asking, who is she? Marin is one of the last, and, and again, spoilers, uh, I'm not sure if this is main plot related, but Marin is one of the last remaining Night Sisters in the planet of Dathomir. They were thought to have been extinguished by various forces and probably the Empire, but uh, there's at least one still kicking, and her name is Marin. Uh, Cal returned to face the shade of Jero Tapal. He realized the only way to defeat Jero was to embrace his past and move forward. He knelt before Jaro's specter, causing the apparition to vanish. As Cal and BD moved into the temple of Kujet, they came upon Marin. This time, however, she was willing to talk. That's such horseshit. Sorry. Pause. No, she... Cal never tried to talk to her. Like, that really bothered me, that he was all like, oh, if you continue to attack me, I'll cut, me cut you down. He never bothered to say, let's have a conversation. I don't want to trespass, but I have to. Can we talk about it and negotiate? He, Sorry, that's very irritating to me. Cal learned that she might be the only survivor of the Night Sister massacre carried out by General Grievous during the Clone War. Marin learned about the Jedi Purge and Cal disavowed Malikos as a fallen Whose Jedi. Whose lives? Innocents. Poor sensitive children who will be hunted down and murdered. As we were. My friend. I have never been one to shy away from the pursuit of knowledge. Uh, but the shadow of the dark side lies heavy in this tomb. I've uncovered Kujet's legacy, a ruthless leader who destroyed the who destroyed the Astriums and lives of any who opposed the Sage's rule. These Zepho were once Kujet's enemies, brave rebels who stood against tyranny. Uh, forgive me, I've spent too many rotations on this planet. My mind is beginning to slip. I can go no further. I must return to Zepho. Alcestis. Malikos, 
Hey, have a great oh. night, cutie pie. You to begin your training. What in these ruins tempts you so much? Or is death? I could ask you the same thing. There is power there. Beyond Jedi understanding. Power I control. I would offer you the same thing. Don't you understand? I'm not interested in power. I want to restore the Order. Restore the Jedi Order? Oh, you poor fool. It's over! Jedi fell long before the Purge. It was stifled by tradition. Deafened by our past glories. Blinded by endless war. Maybe. But it's never over, Malakos. We stand here now, with the chance to learn. To rebuild from our mistakes. Jedi learn. There's no future for them. Why can you not see that? It's time for something new. You and me. We could build something different. Something better. No. And Dathomir will be your grave. Uh, to answer a question in chat, I'm playing on Jedi Knight, which is not easy. Um, you will not beat me. It's it's a, it's the first level above story mode, which is the Dodging won't save you. Um, the really easy one. Come, kill me if you dare. I did Please. not get the best of that one. I cannot avoid death forever. After doing uh, God of War on hard and Assassin's Creed Odyssey on hard, be okay to play one on a little bit of a lighter difficulty, especially since it's not a genre that I'm. Uh, that makes me concerned. Come! Kill me if you dare! Right here, BD. 
Oh god. Oh. Buddy. I think I just super wasted a stim. That was nothing. Apparently trying to close distance with him during that just gets your rock face. I have no doubt that this is w that this is way easy compared to the uh, Sekiro bosses. Like that's this is this is this is a Soulsborne on my level. Whereas I watched Danatello play Sekiro, and <laughs> I am startled that people are able to make it through that game. Please. Whoops. Shakes in fear. Stop moving. You cannot break me. Your Ow. life is forfeit. I will stop. I haven't failed many, like, main boss fights, but I don't think we're going to have to sit through any cutscenes. I'm pretty sure it's going to be straight in. Oh, hey, Tachir. Hope you're having a great evening. Nope. 
too slow for me. I hardly felt that. The only coward. His over here. Help BD. Kind of feeling like a sucker for not taking the stim pack upgrade. Let's finish this. Lucky hit. Part of this fight that was going well. Nice to find the worst. Hey, BD. Hey, bud. Stim. Let him lie in the dark with his secrets until death takes him. Why'd you help me? To rid Dothamir of that parasite. I always knew I liked her, and thank you to Tashir. That <laughs> it was a very fun fight. Uh, in their final confrontation, Malikos attempts to convince Cal to join him, believing the Jedi era is over, the two clash in ideology. The battle escalates, finally tipped when Marin helps Cal defeat the sinister Malikos. What are you really doing here, Cal Kestis? The ones who built this tomb, the Zepho, they created an object called the Astrium. It opens a vault on a distant planet. Inside is a list of four sensitive children across the galaxy. But the Empire is looking for it too. What empire? The empire. The one bent on exterminating force sensitives so no one can stand against it. Then it will come for Dothamir before long, as the war did. I will help you find this Astrium. Thank you for helping me with Malikos. Thought I was a goner for a minute. Yes, you would have died. Right. I am glad you didn't. It is nice to have an ally. Yeah, I like the sound of that. You're welcome, Cal. You should get what you came for. 
Yeah, watching Danatello play... This place. Oh, hold it's on. Horrifying. Watching, watching uh, um, Danatello play Sekiro uh, and Jason McMaster before him really makes me want to try that game, but my previous encounters with From Software games have been uh, short-lived, so I've mostly been waiting for it to go on to a deeper sale. Um, also, it's one of those cases where there's so many other things to play that I know I will like, so I'd like to mix it up a little bit, but yeah, maybe watch for a Sekiro stream coming at some point just to just to see how it goes. I make no claims towards uh, a full playthrough of it, but I really have enjoyed Danatello's stream. Uh, this relief depicts Kujet casting their enemies into the pits below. But only that one. None of the other reliefs say anything whatsoever. <laughs> well, the thing about crowing about your victories is that it really leaves you open to getting crushed by your next defeat. Prefer to take my victories in stride. It is real. Baron, this could be the key to the next generation of Jedi. I'm happy for you and your Jedi. But nothing can bring back my people. After the purge, I was alone for a, a long time. In hiding, I was, I was scared that they'd find out who I was or what I was. What changed? A very good friend of mine told me to go out and find my place in the galaxy. And you listen? Well, no. Life has this funny way of forcing you on the path forward anyway. Now here I am. Or at least expected. A path forward. I will join you. You will? I've spent years waiting for a chance to avenge my sisters. I'm finished waiting. I wish to fight by your side. Night Sisters and Jedi do not travel together, but survivors, we adapt. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we do. What do you think, BD? I agree. My crew, they might take a little bit of convincing, though. Then we'll convince them. So, I like Marin, and I'm glad that she's coming aboard, but wouldn't it have been great right there if BD1 had been like, <laughs> He votes no. Both survivors of Fallen Orders, Marin and Cal, begin to trust one another. After defeating... Having defeated the sinister Malakos, they realize the benefit of working together. Inspired by Cal's words, Marin decides to leave Dathomir with the Mantis crew and pursue her own path in the galaxy. I don't know where she's going to sleep, because basically on the Mantis, Cal has his little sh uh, workshop bunk, and everybody else basically sleeps in their crash couches. Hello? Wait. Use the holo table on the mantis. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can make it back to the mantis. I thought she was going to say something like the Joker, but I guess she's just going to hang out there. There's no way forward. There is now. Did you raise the ones before, too? I did. I wanted to see how you would handle Malikos. You were testing me? And you passed. 
Congratulations. I was, I'm just going to put this out there into the universe. If they did a sequel or like a, you know, Death of the Outsider style, like side story where they allowed you to play as Marin and they gave you like an entirely different set of force powers based on what like Night Sisters can do, that'd be pretty good. Are you going to help me with this? I'm sure you can handle it. I promise I dodged there. Another step. Oh, so uh, to cheers, you've probably seen I, I earned my lightsaber color upgrade. Very happy this with that. Woman you travel with. Who is she? See her? Wait, how do you know about her? I have seen your companions. Marikos wanted me to attack them, but they posed no threat. See her, um. Well, she used to be a Jedi. It's a long story. I would like to learn it. I will say this. Uh, Cal certainly is giving up a lot to Marin, given the fact that they are, as the narrator says, just starting to trust one another. He's told her everything about their mission. Now he's giving her backstories about um, Seer. I'm sort of a big believer that people should have an opportunity to tell, to tell their own stories, and maybe Seer should make be the one to decide if she's comfortable sharing that information with Marin. I will also be asking my producer to pull the clip where we learn that her name was Marin, because I kind of feel like I learned that by reading the, the logs. <laughs> I'm not sure where Cal learned it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a super weird like personal thing. Like this is I feel pretty unique to me. But as soon as they label the orange lightsaber the premium content one crap. I really don't want to die to these things. I can use the stem. Okay. Ah, back to normal. Yeah, the orange lightsaber is the premium content one. It's the one that you have to, you know, pre-order in order to get. That just, it immediately makes me not want to use that one. When we did our playthrough of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I wouldn't use any of the DLC weapons. Anything that I hadn't earned through regular gameplay, I would leave on the table uh, and refuse to make use of them just because it feels gross it it feels like uh like cheating sure sure that's the way physics work <laughs> hold on a second oh and even put me up here okay yes yeah so today is when the pre-order content went live for everybody who didn't pre-order it so Technically, folks like myself who didn't pre-order it and waited for the um, reviews to come in and learned, oh, it, it actually is a good game. Uh, we can now play with all the stuff that the, the other folks had. Which is fine. I mean, like... 
like I said, it's a, it's a super weird thing about me where I'm not mad that other people had it. What I'm mad about is that it feels like something that was withheld in order to entice pre-orders. It doesn't even make any sort of gameplay difference. I don't know. It's I'm weird. You found it. Oh, well, who's this? What's that supposed to mean? It means I'll be joining you. Seer, Grease, this is Marin. She's a witch, isn't she? A night sister. Your fear is unnecessary. I couldn't have gotten the Astrium without her. We fought Malakos together. I trust her. And we trust you. You will have to earn it. Okay, fine. Grab some seat. Don't try anything funny. Welcome aboard. They like you. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Marin allowed Cal to pass, warning that Malakos was ahead. Boy, this is old. Malakos tried one last time to turn Cal, but attacked when he refused. It appeared Malakos would win, but Marin intervened, blasting Malakos with magic. They worked together to defeat Malakos. After, Cal revealed that he had come to Dathomir for an astrium. Marin agreed to help him, and they found one in Kujit's tomb. Desiring more knowledge of the galaxy and a future for her people, Marin joined Cal's quest. Together, the crew stands ready to return to Pagano and find the Holocron. Yeah, I would be, I would, as Tashir says, um, it is all cosmetic. It doesn't matter at all. And if it had been otherwise, then I probably actually would be upset about it. For me, it feels like, first of all, I think it's super cool that the, um, the orange lightsaber was released on the same exact day that I earned all the other colors. I would prefer it if it wasn't like brightly labeled premium content right there. So it feels, makes you feel like a special boy for using it. But at least I unlocked it along with all the other colors, like like day and time. So that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I feel like the purple one is the one that I earned, and the orange one was the one that I was given by a patch. And it's just doesn't mean a thing, except that it does. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we are going to pick up for episode ten by going to. Actually, I'm not even sure where we're going to go next. It might even be a brand new planet now that I think about it. But we're going to call it here. I want to thank everybody for joining us for episode 9 of Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, quit the title screen. And episode uh, 10 will hopefully be as early as tomorrow, possibly on Saturday, but this weekend for sure. We have uh, a long weekend coming up, and I enjoy this game a great deal. I hope that you guys will check out many of our friends who happen to be in chat. And since he was in here earlier today, uh, we're trying to call out specific different people in each episode. I always hope that you will check out uh, Chivalry, More Than Amiya, Tashir Games, Patikan, The Sunny Panda. But today I wanted to do a special shout out for Danatello, who is doing a full length playthrough of Sekiro. If I remember correctly, this is his first uh, encounter with a From Software game, and I admire his perseverance. The game looks fantastic, and as Tashir put it, uh, it is currently on sale at Humble, but I have had a chance to see at least many of the early parts of the game, and um, it strikes just that perfect balance of being a little bit From Software and maybe a little bit Ninja Gaiden that uh, it really does make me want to check it out. Also, I'm just generally in a great mood because we solved a fairly significant technical problem that uh, was in our way earlier and I'm hoping that we'll be able to do something fun a little bit later on but uh, we will see from there. If you will abide a quick moment of silence we're going to go find someone whom we can raid and we'll see you again very soon for another episode and yeah actually there'll be a new episode of More Than a Mia tomorrow as well so I hope that you will check that out for Frightening Fridays. Until next time thank you so much and I oh oh and by the way thank you very much for the follows and thank you very much to uh, Cutie Pie. She is another member of Sunny Panda's Beach Babes uh, the raid was very, very much appreciated, as well as the people who joined up. 
Uh, oh, and uh, good night to Fox Eyes as well. Okay, we're going to call it there because I need to go to sleep before work tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone, and we will talk to you very soon.